pick up what we're talking about so far. We're talking about mediums of, this is the chapter of mediums, okay? Here kind of gives a very short um, description of the different kinds of mediums and what the attribute is. We start by saying, of course, that all of us are at some, some degree mediums since we are able to interact somehow with the spiritual world, with the discarnate spirits. We have a garden edge inspiring us. If we could not interact with that spirit, it would make no sense to have it. We are able to perceive, uh, to receive guidance, inspiration from loved ones. And unfortunately, and unfortunately, perhaps we can pay more attention to them. We are also able to receive influences and guidance for those who are not really seeking our best interest. Um, we speak of obsessors. So if, if we do have obsessors, and you know, some of us do, it is because they can have some kind of interaction with us. So therefore, at, at some level, we are all mediums. So usually when you would use the work mediums, you will attribute for the ones that we we'll call the ostensive medium, or the ones who have a greater ability to interact with the, with the physical, with the spiritual world, or a greater ability to expand their own um, petty spirit, and therefore have that petty spirit more in the spirit in the spiritual world in which it can interact with other spirits, with the petty spirits, of course. And using that method, they are able to bring to us the thoughts of the spirits, uh, the voices of the spirits. Um, they are able to, <clears throat> to use exactly, to be exactly what the word means, a medium, an intermediary. Someone who makes the connection between the two plane, planes. That's what a medium is. Um, and the first one I described is the physical uh, of needles of physical effects, the one that we are going to complete now, which as we already covered, it's not, it's old news for us by now, but those are the mediums who uh, basically are able to donate aware or unaware the ectoplasm that spirits may utilize to perform physical phenomena and physical phenomena by definition is the one that appeals to our physical senses. We hear the noises, we see the apparitions, we smell the flowers that the spirits bring to us. So it appeals to our physical senses. And when it means physical sense is really our of the body, not of the body spirit. So if there is a rap being produced, noise being produced by any spirit, utilizing ectoplasm don donated by a medium of physical effect, everyone will hear it as long as they have a good ears. If there is an operation, everyone will see it, see it as long as they are not blind, okay? Um, and many, many, many kinds of physical effects uh, exist from, from reps, um, from being able, as we just covered, being able to write by uh, utilizing um, apparatus that has been devised. Apparitions can happen, um, objects may disappear, and all those things fall in the category of physical effects. Okay, um, we can start reading here. Um, okay. The invisible beings who reveal their presence by troublesome manifestations are generally spirits of inferior order and such as may be controlled by moral ascendancy. In this ascendancy, we must both seek and acquire 
if we would influence such uncomfortable visitants. In order to do this, we must begin by modifying the medianimity of the individual through whose fluid the phenomenon occur, so as to change the state from that of a natural or involuntary medium to that of a voluntary medium. A result is thus, okay, continue. A result is thus affected analogous to what occurs when natural somnambulism is put a stop to, as is usually done by superinducing of magnetic somnambulism, in which case the action of faculty which emancipates the soul is not arrested, but merely turned in another direction, it is the same with the medianiptic animic faculty. Instead of attempting to prevent the production of the phenomenon, which can rarely be done and cannot be attempted without danger, the medium must be urged to produce the same phenomenon voluntarily, thus making the spirit work by an exertion of his will. In this way, he acquires a mastery over the spirit and often succeeds in converting him into a docile servant instead of the tyrant he was before. It is worthy of remark that in circumstances of this kind, a child has often no less or even more authority than an adult, a fact which gives new proof of the capital point of our doctrine that a child is only a child as regards his body, that his spirit possesses the degree of development he had acquired before his present incarnation, and that he has necessarily a proportional, proportional ascendancy over spirits whose, okay. Okay. Ascendancy over the spirits whose development is inferior to his own, to his own, right. The moralization of an obsessing spirit through the counsels of an infutile in, in and experienced third party is often efficient, efficacious when the medium is not in state to act for himself. We shall return to this point by and by. Well, this really okay, efficient. thanks. Yeah. So the most important thing here is that in the invisible, in the invisible world, those beings that reveal their presence through sensible effects or physical effects, so those that impress our physical senses, are usually of low order spirits. This you already covered as well. Um, to begin with, only the, the characteristics, the qualities of the petty spirit of a more evolved spirit, it may be too sublime, it may be too um, spiritualized to interact with the more dense gross matter such as ectoplasm and would not be able to utilize ectoplasm. So only by the fact that those spirits are able to use ectoplasm, which is something produced by our physical body and therefore is something dense, no, relatively speak. It already, already denotes that those utilizing ectoplasm to perform physical phenomena are not really highly evolved spirits. Not saying that they are completely ignorant, not say that they are evil. We you know it's a big difference. Okay. But that at that level of, of spiritual progress, their petty spirit is still um, deeply materialized if they, they are able to interact with ectoplasm. And two things may happen here. Is spirits may perform physical phenomena under the, the guidance, under the, the request of a more evolved spirit. So let's assume that I, I am a beast in the spiritual world, but I'm a beast with goodwill, a beast willing to learn. Being ignorant as I am, um, I, I seek to learn, I seek to develop myself. So 
uh, and the spirit more evolved than I, you say, okay, I'll take you with me. I'll teach you the little things that I know. In 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 the next change, you know, I'll allow you to do some work. And some of those work that higher or the spirit may allow me to do, maybe to perform physical phenomena for the good. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, to bring flowers in the spiritual center, whatever. Okay. Or it could be that I am a beast in the spiritual world who just want to have some fun, fun and I enjoy uh, seeing incarnate spirits in panic, running around in fear, and I start to and I locate a, a medium of physical phenomena, unaware of its ability, and I start to suck in his or her ectoplasm, and with that ectoplasm, I go on around to create all kinds of situation that I do enjoy, which is scary for other people because that's what I am, okay? Naturally, spirits, spirits are doing the, this. They are being allowed somehow. Why? I could, not, I could not say why. But the important point of the Kardec says, says here is that spirits, incarnate or discarnate, with a high ascendance of moral evolution, have control of those spirits. Mm. And the invitation of Kardec is for the mediums, even if it's only for um, physical effect, is to go from uh, natural mediums to facultative mediums, meaning the ones who have the potential, who, also know, who donate ectoplasm, unaware, to be the ones who are aware of it, educated themselves, mature, morally speak, speaking, then they will have control of that faculty. Naturally, if I am a medium of, of physical effect and I produce tremendous amount of ectoplasm, spirits may, may use it. But if I educate myself, perhaps I would have control of it. Perhaps I will associate with higher or spirits and my ectoplasm is not going to no longer be utilized by spirits who just want to use it to have fun, to scare people, to do things that are no, not productive, to have things that does not do any good to anyone. Mm -hmm. As a medium, it's my responsibility to use that attribute given to me to the best of my ability. No one was, was coming here in this incarnation as a medium or for any kind, physical phenomenon, not, to be an instrument in the hands of ignorant spirits to what uh, they are creating problem to others. If you have these attributes to use it properly, in order to use it properly, first of all, you have to know that we have it. Second, we have to educate it. And third, you have to educate ourselves morally because that is what created that authority of the, over all the spirits. It is the moral quality that gives the authority, that gives the respectability. And as, as we know, high order spirits have control of low order spirits because of moral progress. That's all that is saying here over here. So the medium must educate oneself. And not to educate oneself, we must recognize its mediumship. How do you do that? By knowing, knowing thyself, which is a very important concept in concept in spiritism. Okay. Question, comments? Now, 163 now, yeah. if we use the book, it started as a, uh, as a different part. There is no, is a different chapter. Part of the chapter is the electrical persons. Okay. Um, let's read and then I, I comment. But as, well, let's read. Okay. Electrical persons. It would seem that at first sight, that persons who are endowed with a large amount of natural e electricity might be placed in this category of mediums. Such persons are venerable human torpedoes and produce by their mere contact all the effects of magnetic attraction 
and repulsion, but we should be wrong in regarding them as mediums. For medianimity presupposes the direct intervention of a spirit, while in the cases we are speaking of, conclusive experiments have proved that electricity is the sole cause of the phenomenon in question. This curious faculty, which we may almost call an infirmity, is sometimes aligned to medianimity, as is seen in the history of the spirit rapper of Benzaber, already alluded to, but it is often entirely independent of medianimity. As we have already remarked, the only proof spirit intervention in a given phenomenon is its intelligent character. Whenever, trying, trying. whenever this characteristic is lacking, we may safely assume that the phenomenon is due to some purely physical cause. It is a question whether electrical persons have not a special aptitude for becoming physical mediums. We think they have, but this is a point which can only be decided by experience. Thanks. So as we see, Kardec's in Sudo Garabat, uh, he brings a topic and just to create a negation to that topic itself. As an example, you know, he has a book, it's Heaven and Hell, and the whole book is to, is to tell us that Heaven and Hell does not exist. Right? So over here is the same thing. When you talk the electrical persons, or mediums, uh, uh, mediums of elect electrical uh, of, ele of elect electricity, and it says to begin with, these are not mediums, and that's the important thing to understand here. Uh, these so-called electrical persons, uh, if if you look around, it's it's being documented more in the paranormal studies. It's not much of a part of of the. Um, Spiritual doctrine. This is the only part that you're going to see this top of the electrical person. You're not going to see that anywhere else. I guarantee you, in none of the books of the codification, and none of the works of uh, Andrea Luis, none of the works of um, Emmanuel. I can guarantee you're not going to see these electrical persons anymore, because indeed it's something that deals purely with physicality. Okay. Uh, that is on, on, on the magazine, on the Spiritist Review of 1958. Uh, that is the case of this electric child, which was a, a boy who was born in a small part of France, yes, France, that since from birth, he had some very special qualities and special phenomena that people who would hold that child would feel some kind of energy, um, not necessarily a lot of shock, but we would feel it. And as this kid grew up, at times he would be walking and metals would approach to him as if he was a human uh, magnet, literally. And there is other cases documented of, of especially children, that uh, they have this attraction to metals and they call this electric persons. Um, cases of individuals who are able to dim or make uh, light, light bulbs more or less uh, bright. All those things that's being documented over there. How does it happen? I don't know, particularly I'm not interested in this kind of phenomenon. I uh, don't have any curiosity towards that, but that has been documented, okay? But the important thing that Kardec question here is this, first of all, he makes a statement. These are not mediums. This phenomenon is purely uh, a, a material, physical thing. But the question that he proposes is, are those individuals, because you see, mostly with children, is, is interesting, uh, with the potential to develop the ability of being medium or physical phenomena. And uh, it seems like this is me thinking here, now it's not written, okay? But reading a little bit, it seems like there is indeed a potential that is that those individuals may have also the ability to donate great amount of ectoplasm, mm -hmm. okay? But again, this is, is the only part that we're going to see this, 
um, in the spiritualist, lit spiritualist literature because it's really a study more of uh, paranormal science. Mm. Question, comments? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can go to sensitive or impressionable mediums. One sixty four. We give this designation to persons who are able to recognize the presence of spirits by a vague impression, a sort of shuddering sensation running through their whole body and for which they cannot account. This variety of medianimity has no very decided characteristic. All mediums being necessarily impressionable, this quality may be regarded as being general rather than special, but it is an indispensable condition of all other forms of medianimity. It is different from purely physical and nervous impressionability with which it must not be confounded, but there are persons whose nerves are by no means delicate and who are nevertheless affected by the presence of spirits. While others whose nerves are very irritable have no perception of their presence, the faculty of perceiving the presence of spirits is developed by habit and may become so subtle as to enable one who is endowed with it to recognize by impression, not only the good or the evil nature of the spirit at his side, but even his individuality, just as a blind man by an undefinable definable faculty of, of perception recognize the approach of such and such a person. So a medium of the kind we are considering recognizes the presence of certain spirits. A good spirit always produces an agreeable impression. An evil spirit, on the contrary, produces an impression that is painful and disagreeable and causes a feeling of anxiety. It seems to bring with it, so to say, an odor of impurity. Okay. So here we're talking about real mediums, okay? just the same way that we are all real mediums and I'm, I'm differentiate for let's say for the elect persons that is a purely physical thing right yeah. we are all mediums you all have the ability of interact at a very small level with the uh, spiritual world there's individuals the sensitive impressionable medium at a, a quarter of a step above the average us, okay? Um, there is, and there is different, important also differentiates of some physical phenomena also. Um, as animal, we have something that is called the limit of approximation, okay? When it is gathered too close to us, we we feel that thing. We don't, you know, not comfortable if people get away too close to us, unless it's someone that is familiar to us, right? It's it's part of zoology, something called limit of approximation, that we will sense the the, the presence of or someone. That if someone is staring at you, even in let's say outside of your range of vision it's likely that you look at the direction of the person who is staring at you. There's something that leads to that. That's also pretty much physiological, okay? It's the part of our sensorial things. It's, it's, it's a means of, of, of self-defense, okay? <clears throat> this as, as us as animal, in zoology there's explanation for that. Okay, at one point in our existence, we have to be careful not to become food for lions. We do have the ability of sense the presence of those who are staring at us, watching us very carefully. We all have that. Okay, but here it's a little bit above. You are dealing with discarnate kind of spirits. Some individuals have that ability to perceive 
something extra physical that are able to sense the perception, the presence of uh, this current spirit. And even more than that, they are able to feel the quality of the feelings of the sensations of that spirit. Someone will come in a room and say, if the room feels kind of sad, there is something sad in that, in that place because the spirits are over there are sad or they'll be there, they'll be extremely happy. And uh, for us, without that kind of mediumship, everything seems to be the same, but those, those individuals, those more sensitive mediums, we will have to have that perception. So they no, long, no longer will have the perception of spirits, we have the perception of the emotional state of that spirit or group of spirits. Um, uh, someone who has this ability, who is aware of it, may educate it. And may, once you educate, when you have it, you may even upgrade that to be very confident that go in a place or, or actually being at home or whatever, and notice the approximation, the presence of the spirit, and, and, and understand that, that that's what is happening. And that is the important thing of this message here, that this sensitive and impressible mediums are almost like us, one little step above is the ability to perceive. If they educate this ability, they may develop it to another level. We'd be very conscious, conscious of the, the presence of the spirit. They may even be able to assist those spirits if they need assistance, you know, play or something, whatever they can do with those spirits. Um, yeah, I think that's it here. Comments, questions? Yeah, Elmo. Um, so in the book says the, I mean, on, on the, the paper book here, uh, that uh, mediums are necessarily uh, impressionable and thus impressionability is a quality that may be regarded as more general than special. It is a rudimentary fact that is indispensable to development of all the others. So uh, this indispensable, so all mediums go through that phase realizing or not before developing any other mediumship. That's what, that's what it says, right? Well, it says that there's very rudimentary faculty to be able to sense that there is something more than the physical, there is something there. It is indispensable for you to open yourself to that possibility, meaning that Let's assume that, that I am uh, a, a sensitive medium, but I am completely ignorant of this fact, this, this factor, okay? I will completely ignore it. But if I am willing to work with this, I will use that as the primordial, the point of ignition for, to develop all my faculties. I have to start by having that, that, that ability, that sensitivity to sense the presence of the spirit in order for me to be able to interact at a higher degree with that spirit. That is the very minimal point of ignition where things will develop. It's from that minimal point of ignition that it will develop in a psychography or a psychophony but at first I have to have that sensitivity. I have to, I have, to have the sense that 
there is someone here, there is someone here that I could interact with. Otherwise, how I could we do it? Because usually people, they, we jump the, the first step, let's put that way. People say, mm -hmm. I start seeing, I start to feel like writing, I, I feel like speaking, but we don't, we don't talk about much of the, uh, this, this impression ability uh, as a mediumship, like the first step of the mediumship. Um, we see in our um, fraternal systems, a lot of people come at exactly with that point. I mean, I, I feel there is something happening. I, I feel there is something more than I can explain. As I know that I have those feelings that is someone, I hear that a lot. Um, people who may potentially be a medium, not say they are, and that's why I tell them when I talk to them as well. We need to study this father, we have to investigate this father to see what it is. But very often, that's how it, it does start. I mean, if, if you should just feel like writing, you should be able to differentiate if you like writing your thoughts or someone else's thought. And if, you are, and if you're able to make the differentiate that you are writing someone else's thought, then you are accepting that you are sense the presence of a third party right there. Because yeah, uh, um, I don't know about other mediums and uh, this impression ability, it, uh, it, Well, let's, uh, I, let's, I, let's stick with the, with the writing because I got know your case. Let's stick with the writing. Um, all of a sudden, you have the desire to sit down, sit down, pick up a paper and start writing. But it's time, it's time for you to go to bed after work in the morning. And this desire, it's outside of you almost because you want to go to bed, you have to get up in the morning. So it's something that is out of you. It's, it's, it's a third party who wants you to write, basically. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Right. So there is a third party that, that you sense that presence, that presence would like you to write. But yes, I agree with you very often. We bypass that and say, oh, I just feel like writing. I just feel like writing. What do you mean you feel like writing? It's midnight. You have to get up, you have to get up at, at 3 o'clock in the morning. You really want to? Going out on no, I'd rather go to bed, but I feel like I have to write. So it's it's something else that, that wants you to write. And you have that per perception, but you by bypass that just by saying, Oh, I feel like writing. Yeah, because uh, um this this sensation uh, uh, sometimes it's subtle, sometimes it's not. Um Thanks God so far is being quote unquote pleasant, but I wasn't paying too much attention since again, we focus on the other kinds of uh, mediumship. So now you got me thinking if I'm supposed to pay attention, I'm supposed to be doing something that, that, that is just uh, okay, let's write something, let's do something. Mm. Or it's just their presence there we are here, you know, praying with you, you know. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to do with that feeling right now because I wasn't like that, you know, paying attention to that. But it, it does continue with the other uh, faculties. No, you have, to be, you have to be in control of the faculty. You have to do things in accordance that favors your life and your lifestyle if it's time to write if it's the right place is the, is the right place the right time yes you you can go ahead and and psychograph but it's not the right time it's not the, the right place to so say no save it for us you why you cannot do it right now sorry you gotta be under control of it now it's that it's up to you how you want to have control of it but you must have control of it Yeah, no, uh, again, um, uh, as I said, I'm, I'm very lucky because, you know, mine is so far is under control. <laughs> but uh, I'm saying that, for example, sometimes I'm, you know, I'm, I feel those, um, uh, like, I, 
it's hard to say like chills, but it's kind of a chills, like like I've been caressed, something like that. And again, it's very pleasant. And I feel like, okay, so what do I do with this? You know what I mean? But so far I was like, I was just feeling it and and doing nothing, not like um, making some nothing out of it. Mm-hmm. I knew that was a presence and I knew, no, no, I felt right. That was a presence. And for the, the way uh, I felt was a good presence. And, and then usually what I do, I say, thank you or whatever, but I wasn't doing nothing with that. It was just came, felt, that's it. But who is telling you that you have to do something with that? That's, that's what I'm asking. Who is, you know, say, who, is, who is saying in this reading here, this, who is telling you that you have to do something with that? No, that's me asking you. <laughs> well, and I'm, sometimes it feels good. Enjoy it. That's it. It's nothing to do with that. Yes, really does. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy the ride. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it feels good. It feels good. Yeah. Say thank you. I I acknowledge your presence. I'm grateful for your presence. You bring me good good vibes. And that's it. Okay. And don't worry, right? <laughs> no, absolutely don't worry. <laughs> Why don't you worry something that is pleasant? Uh, thank you. Okay. Okay. Hearing mediums. These mediums hear the voice of spirits. Sometimes, as we have observed when speaking of pneumatography, it is an inner voice that speak to the, speaks to the interior consciousness. Sometimes it is an exterior voice, clear and distinct as that of a person in the flesh. Hearing mediums are thus enabled to enter into conversation with spirits. When they are in the habit of communicating with certain spirits, they recognize them immediately by the character of their voice. Persons who are not endowed with this faculty can communicate with spirits through the intermediacy of bearing medium, who thus plays a part of an interpreter. This faculty is a very agreeable one when the medium hears only good spirits or those whom he evokes, but it is not so when, as sometimes happens, he is violently as assailed by some hostile spirit or forced by some backward and troublesome persecutor to listen to unpleasant or unseemly remarks. In all such cases, it is necessary to get rid of the obsessing spirit by the means of which we shall point out in our chapter on obsession. Uh, Okay, so this is, it may, uh, that's a thing that I am not a medium, I don't have no, none of those faculties. And I would imagine that is be a little bit more difficult for, for mediums. But the description is that the spirit, mediums with that faculty they can hear the voices of the spirit. They can hear the voices of the spirit with their bad spirit, not with their uh, organic ears apparatus. Meaning that if in a room of six, seven people, a medium, a hearing medium is is hearing a medium on a spirit. Only that medium is able to hear the, that voices. All of us were not extensive medium, or even if you have a different kind of mediumship, we will not hear it unless we have the ability of hear spirit. Um, and of course, it would be very pleasant and very nice come from good spirits who come you now to. Even if it comes to tell us the wrong that we're doing, which usually 
if evolved spirit won't do it, it's still pleasant because the energy that they bring is pleasant, they carry them is pleasant. And the opposite, of course, if it's unevolved, rude, evil spirit, we will carry the characteristic energy that is not pleasant, that will be difficult. Um, the, again, as not being a medium to me becomes a little bit difficult to, to express this, but let's say in, in psychography, the individual will, the middle psychography expands its per spirit. There is um, interaction of the two per spirit of the spirit and of the medium in which the, the medium receive the thoughts of the spirits and write it, right? And very often as a, as a means of, of speaking, the medium of psychography say, or the spirit was telling me, okay, very often we hear that. That's, a, that's, that's a, just an expression because the medium of psychography does not hear the words. He receives the thought, okay? But that could actually be expressed by the medium as, I hear the spirit telling me. Could it be? Could be. But then it's no longer psychography. Then, then you are hearing and you are writing down what the spirit is saying. That's different. That's, that's different. But most often, the most um, common thing that happens for needles that write is via psychography is the approximation of the two per spirit as is, is the perception or receiving the thought of the spirit and writing down those thoughts okay are there cases in which the spirit say and dictates and then we write we hear it and, and the person in medium writes yes but that's not psychography anymore mm. Okay. Do we have the do we have degrees of the hearing? Because because I was talking to my mom, <clears throat> and we were we were talking about seeing mediums and the degrees, and she was saying, because you know she sees spirits like with eyes eyes closed, and also with eyes open. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. it, it, it depends on the spirit how the the spirit wants to present. Uh, in case of uh, the hearing, uh, can that be like subtle that you might think is a thought thought and or when you hear you actually hearing, there's no doubt about it. Um, that I would say it has more to do with the experience, the education of the medium that even if it's more subtle or more whispering, so to say, I don't know if that's the right word, an experienced medium, um, hearing medium will be able to say, yes, is the spirit speaking, I am hearing the voice. It's very low, it's very hard to understand, it's, little confusing, uh, can really make up the words, but uh, that, that medium is hearing, will be able to differentiate one from the other. But I think that does more with the experience of the medium. Because yeah, I'm asking, because um, you were there, so, when you see a spirit and a spirit in there is not a psychography, there is no communication on you're seeing something and the spirit look at you and say something, but I'm, I wasn't hearing through my physical ears, but I understood the word. So was there like a, a like a thought push or I, you kind of hear what the spirit said? 
Well, you, you tell me, did you hear the voice? Definitely the come, the words come from that spirit. Then it, then it was a hearing. Um, you have to remember that the um, mediumistic abilities very often compounded. It's not an isolated thing. Very often hearing medium also is a you know psychography is also a seeing medium. It's very often it's compounded. It's not a one isolated thing. It can only be this, it cannot be that. And they coexist and you may have that window open one or two at the same time as well. So a medium may uh, that that let's say works mostly with psychography, also have the ability of hearing, able to hear uh, a spirit across the hallway, tell him him or her something. So let me ask you this, because uh, just a thought chase came. So if, if you're hearing, you are able to tell the voice of the spirit, if it's a it's a low tone, it's a great, if it's a bass tone, whatever tone is the voice, if it's a kid or whatever, you can you, you can describe that, right? Versus if it's a, like a thought push, you will still understand the message, but you won't be able to tell the difference in the voice, right? Good question. I'll have to think of it because I never read anything direct on that, but it does make sense. Um, but even if you do, are not able, let's say that it's a psychography and you're receiving the thought of that spirit, but you're also receiving the emotions, the sensibility uh, of that spirit. And with that, you'll be able to also tell a lot of that spirit. Um, if that spirit, let's say, is, is a child or not, You'll be able to have that perception through that approximation of, of the petty spirit as well. Even if you don't hear the voice, you'll be able to say if it's a younger or older, a child, a male or female, all those kinds of things, just by that uh, um, petty spiritual uh, interactions as well. But I, I would say, Kevin, that no, we cannot say to speak of the quality of the voice if you not hear that voice. Got it. I think Daniela has a question. Yeah, no, it's more like it's more like a, a comment on that, Renato. In my case, it, it's hard to to realize. Like, is this my own voice or? I'm, I'm listening to someone, right? A spirit. And I, I, I can't see, I can't uh, hear the voice, the tone, or even the, the age, uh, the, the characteristics, like more specifically. But if I find myself in a dialogue, I suspect it's not only me, you know? Like, as Elmo was saying, like the emotions, if triggers in me, uh, like strong emotions and I sense that dialogue is very loaded and then I, 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 I'm I not certain but I, I, I believe it could be like a spirit talking and having this conversation like it's back and forth you know like you respond and then and then I guess people who suffers uh, suffer from schizophrenia schizophrenia might feel, might go through this, this kind of uh, moments, you know? So the person doesn't know it's a spirit and then think it's going crazy <laughs> because it can be very confusing. So I try to identify on my own if that happens. Based on the emotions I feel coming from that uh, thought and if I find myself in a dialogue like going back and forth. So that, that's what I, I wanted to say. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Thanks, thanks. I actually said, the, the thing with the, 
the pathologists, the psychiatric pathologists, the schizophrenia, the individuals hear voices. Um, those individuals are hearing voices. They are hearing something that is coming from a third party. And these individuals um, are able to have a dialogue with that. So even though, and this is me saying, it's very well established that there is a pathology. We can do uh, brain MRIs and pinpoint to know with special functional MRIs now that there is a pathology. I do question if those voices are not really coming from an spirit to maintain that the level of interaction. But that, again, it's me saying it's not it's not in spiritism. Okay. Um, and when you say about dialogue, it's interesting, um, which my own experience in my case was a dream. I know it was a dream. And um, I was having a dialogue. It has to do with something that happened in the center in our last, uh, last meeting, the communications. But I only could hear the second part, the, 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 the second part. I could not hear my own voice. And I, I'm absolutely sure, and I could not see anything. It was almost, it was, even, even instead of dreaming, speaking with an invisible person, or by the way, a very distinct voice, and I could not hear my own voice, it was a dialogue. I know what I was saying, but I could not hear it. But I could clearly hear that 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 there was the per, there was the person there was the spirit, I know it was this kind of spirit also, but I could not uh, see that that spirit at all. But I am sure, absolutely convinced, that there was not a mimic, that I was talking to a spirit, and um, I think that may be difficult in some cases for mediums with less experience to be able to have that degree of confidence. In my case, I'm not a medium, it was a dream, it's easier. But I think for a medium at a time, they may create that, um, the challenge to be certain that he has indeed it's someone else. So it may be come from myself, maybe anemic and, which is okay. I think with some experience, we will be able to make the differentiation and even distinguish clearly if is uh, perceiving the thoughts and attribute to those thoughts as a voice or really hearing a voice. That comes with time, I believe, with some experience. Elmo, it, it would be related to experience or to sensitivity I, I i think it's experience but you i take it but i think it's more experience so i have a long way to go all of us <laughs> all of us a long way to go so so people with schizophrenia they it's not in their own thoughts is the conversation is Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not like saying that. I'm questioning that. I'm putting oh, yeah. that as a question mark. Okay. Not saying that, please. <laughs> so, so it could be both cases. It could be the conversation in their own heads, and, or it could be coming from spirits that they hear voices that are not their own, and they get disturbed. Yeah, I'm placing that as a question mark. Is that possible? Mm, okay. Because we know there is a pathology. You know there is a problem with that organic brain. Okay. But we also know that they had to have a conversation with, a, with a someone else that's not themselves. So I'll put there as a question. That's all. So uh, if, if your meetings is seeing or hearing or whatever it is something that is not directed related to to him or her that's um then then that's that's a development of that faculty right 
meaning, um, for example, sometimes mediums uh, are giving a communication, other mediums can see parts of, of the communication, different aspects, even though they are not directly um, participating in the communication itself. So that medium that sees or hear has that ability, right? Yes. It's not, it's, it's not the spirit uh, uh, trying to push the thought into different mediums, right? Because the, the spirit is focused on that particular medium. If your other medium is seeing or hearing, that medium has that ability, that, that faculty uh, developed, right? Yes. I mean, you, you could not use what you don't have. And the spirits could not take from you something that you don't have to give. Yeah, yeah, I was just, I was just I, I'm, 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 I was trying to understand the other, the other prisma where the spirit is, the relationship with spirit and, and media is, as we explained, we studied before, is one on one. And if the other meaning seeing or hearing that is the ability that the media has to perceive that the other communication. There is no two, two, one, or it's always one on one. You have to remember that all the mediums in a session, in a properly educated meeting, all those mediums are on a mediumistic trance. They are all in an outer state of consciousness, consciousness throughout the meeting. So they may have all the mediumistic, mediumistic uh, perception that they have the attribute to. So if it's a seeing medium and um, medium A is give a communication, uh, medium C may see the spirit given the communication. And the other medium has the ability of hearing, may hear if that spirit is saying something. All of the mediums are in a, in a, in a state of trance. All, the, all, all of the mediums are ready to have mediumistic perception in accordance to the faculties. So even if Medium A is giving a psychophony or psychography. Medium B, C, and D are able to sell perception according to the faculties. One will see it, one will uh, have the feeling of, of, of pain, of ecstasy that the spirit brings to them according to each one, according to the faculties. Mm, that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, I think we went over. We're going to overtime. <laughs> We're already there. <laughs> we'll continue next week. Let's, see. Um, let's make our final prayers, please, um, Soraya. Yes. Tell spiritual benefactors, our guardian angels, now, beloved Jesus, with our hearts full of gratitude, we thank you. As we gather here again today, the studies from both classes, we thank you, dear Lord, allowing us to continue the path of understanding and learning and putting into practice. We thank you, dear Lord. We ask as we leave here today, may we continue with our studies throughout the week. May we continue with our prayers, thanking God, blessed God, for all that we have received, our families and all that are going throughout this universe of pain and suffering. May we keep our prayers for them in the spirit world and the physical world. We thank you, dear Lord, and with that in mind, we ask permission 